today, we are talking about the concept of total internal reflection. In order to understand that concept, I have this figure from your text. It is a figure of water and light being beamed down onto the people of light going down onto the mirror. The mirror itself is split into three separate planes. We have one ray of light that is reflected, comes up here, and then is refracted out of the water. Then we have another one that is reflected and then is refracted as it leaves the water. And the last one that is reflected and then never leaves the water. And this concept is called total internal reflection because all of the incident rays right here are completely uh, reflected. So it's called total internal reflection. In order to understand why this happens, we need to look at this ray diagram, which is also from your text. If we have light coming out of the water, going from the water into air, we already know the index of refraction of water. It is 1.333. Or we already know the index of refraction of air. Class it is? With four sig figs, 1.000. So as we go from water into air, the index of refraction goes down. Therefore, we know it is bent away from the normal. Bent away from the normal. Bent away from the normal. Now, we need to talk about theta sub c. That's right, we have another theta. Theta sub c, theta sub c, theta sub c is called the critical angle critical angle. I want to make sure I get the definition of the critical angle correct. Actually, let's do this first. So at the critical angle, the angle of refraction would be 90 degrees. The angle of refraction would be 90 degrees. And the reason I say would be is because if the light is refracted at 90 degrees, class, does the light leave the water? If it's refracted at 90 degrees, does it ever leave the water? No. So instead of being refracted, it is reflected. Because it's, if it would be refracted at 90 degrees, it doesn't leave the water. So it never actually was refracted. It is reflected instead. So the critical angle is the angle at which the refracted angle would be 90 degrees. So the critical angle, theta sub c, is the minimum incident angle at which all incident light will be totally internally reflected. The critical angle is the, ang the minimum incident angle at which all the incident light will be totally internally reflected. I am aware that this all and this totally are redundant. We actually only need one or the other, but I have both in there just to stress that all of the light is internally reflected. In other words, we have total internal reflection. Okay, this means that if the incident angle, because this is the minimum incident angle at which we're getting total internal reflection, if the incident angle is, is greater than or equal to the critical angle, we get total internal reflection. Let's derive the equation for this. The equation for this is going to use Snell's law. Please tell me what Snell's law is, Mahesh. Um, Snell's law is the um, Index of refraction of refraction times the I'm going the right way. Oh, you're, you're fine. Okay. I got it. Uh, the sign of the. Oh wait, wait. But I didn't fully get this. Like, what is this? Of the index of refraction. True. But it has a subscript. Oh right. Um, of the refracted light. This one isn't the R. Oh, that's uh, the incidental light. Close. You added a couple of letters. Incident. Incident. Index of refraction. Um, right. Uh, the sine of the incident angle. 
that's equal to the, refract, the index of refraction. So um, it's supposed to be an R. Right? Uh, I Mahesh, I believe I did say that this is a difficult, difficult one to say. Am I correct? Right. Oh, yeah. I got it. Miss Hong, finish it for him. Help, help him out here. Um, is equal to? The incident index of refraction times the sine of the incident angle is equal to the refracted index of refraction times the sine of the refracted angle. We're going to use this equation to solve for the equation for the critical angle. Now, the critical angle, as we just pointed out, is the incident angle at which the refracted angle would be 90 degrees. So, the incident angle equals the critical angle when the refracted angle would be equal to 90 degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute into Snell's law. We still have the incident index of refraction times the sine of. Now, rather than the incident angle, we're substituting in the critical angle because we're going to set the refracting angle into to set it to 90 degrees. So we now have the refracted index of refraction times the sine of the refracted angle for the critical angle that will be 90 degrees. Class, what is the sine of 90 degrees? One. One. So this whole piece just goes to one. In other words, the sine of the critical angle is equal to the refracting index of refraction divided by the incident index of refraction. And that is the boxed equation for the critical angle. The sine of the critical angle equals the refracted index of refraction divided by the incident index of refraction. Notice what this means is if the incident angle is, I don't know, we already have it. If the incident angle is greater than or equal to the critical angle, we have total internal reflection. Okay, so now, the sine of any angle has a range. Let's talk about the maximum. The maximum value you can get for the sine of any angle is, he too? Sine theta, any sine of any angle has to be less than or equal to three. No, you're thinking of the angle itself. I'm talking about the sine of any angle. Who can tell me what the sine of any angle must be less than or equal to one. one? Remember, the sine of any angle has to be less than or equal to one. In other words, one is greater than or equal to the sine of the critical angle. By definition, the sine of the critical angle has to be less than or equal to one. Well, we know the sine of the critical angle equals the uh, refracted index of refraction divided by the incident index of refraction. In other words, 1 is greater than e equal to the refracting index of refraction divided by the incident index of refraction. So I can multiply both sides by the incident index of refraction. We get that the incident index of refraction is greater than or equal to the refracting index of refraction. In other words, you only get total in you can only get total internal reflection if you are going from a substance with a higher index of refraction into a substance with a lower index of refraction. We have a couple of examples of total internal reflection which will help you to understand how this works. One of them is a fiber optic cable. The way a fiber optic cable works is the light goes in, and then it is totally internally reflected throughout the glass, the fiber optic cable. And then when it gets to the other end of the cable, it is going to come out the other end of the cable. So you can pass the light through the cable, and it will not come out. I have an example right here. This is not actually a fiber optic cable. It's just a piece of plastic, but it's curved in such a way that it will act pretty much like a fiber optic cable. Notice when I shine the light in, it then comes out this end right here. So you can see when I shine the light into the fiber optic cable, or the fiber optic cable demo, what happens is 
the light is totally internally reflected throughout this whole thing, and then ends up coming out through that end right there, as you can see. I can do the same thing if I take and I uh, do it this way, it will come out this end right here. We do get a little bit coming out of over here, and the reason for that is because this is a piece of plastic and it's not quite as good as a fiber optic cable. Brian? Does it come out in a point that it wouldn't have uh, it? If this were a fiber optic cable, it would. It would actually come out like a point, but because it's not, it doesn't actually work quite as well. Now, one thing to make sure that you understand is that it's not the index of refraction of the single item itself, the cable, fiber optic cable, but it's the difference between the index of refraction of the incident material and the refracting material. Okay? So, that being said, when I take and I uh, fire this light down the uh, fiber optic cable like this, it, none of the light actually goes down to the ground. It doesn't actually pass through. It all comes out the end of the, this fiber optic cable down. But if instead of having this surrounded by air, if I increase the index of refraction of these materials surrounding this fiber optic cable demo, what happens is when I fire this into here, instead, now you can see that it actually passes through the fiber optic cable and comes out of the fiber optic cable. We no longer have total internal reflection because the difference between the index of refraction of the fiber optic demo plastic and the water is not enough to cause total internal reflection. There is also another example of total internal reflection, which you are probably more familiar with, which is a diamond. A diamond is specifically designed such that the light that comes through the top of the diamond will then be totally internally reflected and come back out the top of the diamond. In addition to that, the light that comes in through the bottom of the diamond will also pass through the top of the diamond. So when you look at a diamond, it looks very bright and sparkly because you look at it from the top and all of the, or a large percentage of the light that goes into the diamond comes up through the top of the diamond. In addition to that, some of it is dispersed. In other words, you see some of the rainbow effect. I happen to actually have a diamond with me when my wife and I got engaged, I said it's not fair that you're the only one who gets an engagement ring, I should get one too. And I also said if you're gonna get a diamond, I should get a diamond as well. So I have a diamond engagement slash wedding ring. We both have identical ones. So I can take and I can uh, have the laser shine through the top of the diamond. And what you get here is something that looks like this. You can see we get the reflection, or I'm sorry, we get total internal refle refraction, reflection of the light going into the diamond and coming back out the top. As you can see, that's where the sparkle of your diamond comes from. Good. So that is the basic concept of total internal reflection. 